Over the years, Australia has encountered many problems with introduced species of various kinds. The biological control catastrophe of the cane toad springs to mind. Species introduction is a real problem in this country because its ecosystems are so isolated from the rest of the world. That is what makes them so precious, unique, and at the same time, so fragile. Introduced species thrive in their new ecosystems, partly because their population is no longer limited by their original predators. Moreover, native species have not evolved defenses against these new organisms. They can cause all kinds of damage and destruction to agriculture and biodiversity, and sometimes have grave financial consequences. A recent example is the South African small hive beetle. It was first discovered in New South Wales in 2002. However, it is believed to have arrived in Australia as early as 2000. In its native country, the small hive beetle is only considered a minor pest, partly because the African honeybee is highly aggressive towards the beetles. In countries such as the US and Australia, however, the European honeybees have not developed such defence mechanisms and therefore are not able to as effectively combat the hive beetle. Figure 1 demonstrates the life cycle of the small hive beetle and also represents the symbiotic relationship between the parasite, the small hive beetle, and the host, the European honeybee's hive. Once the larvae are hatched, they eat and tunnel through the the comb, fermenting the honey, creating a slime, effectively destroying the hive. After 10 to 16 days, the larvae tunnel through the hive, drop to the soil and pupate. After pupation, the beta leaves the soil, starting the cycle again. And indeed, the small hive beetle is starting to have a considerable impact on beehives around the country and they're causing, they're not going to go away and the damage they're causing is quite great because... When it first started you'd find about two or three beetles per hive. Now you can find 200 or 300 beetles in the hive. Once the larvae hatch, there is very little the beekeepers can do and the bees are forced to abandon the hive. It's not that you just think, oh, I've okay, lost a hive. You've got a horrible mess there to clean up and you have to clean it up. If not, the beetle keeps breeding and the larvae keep going through more and more larvae coming out and they're going to pupate in the soil around your hives and you've got a lot more beetles there to, that are going to go back into your hives next season. We have to burn, burn the frames to kill all the eggs and the beetles. We've lost uh, around 50. There are a number of factors limiting the beetles' distribution and abundance. Among them are dry and cold weather. If the soil is too dry, the larvae are likely to desiccate before reaching adulthood, and cold winters reduce their populations significantly. Some of the potential downsides of climate change in the future, if you have climate change that involves warmer and wetter weather, then you will have an extension in the range of certain pests like this. There are a number of moderately efficient physical traps currently used by beekeepers but further research into control mechanisms is exploring the benefits of natural fungi and aromatic traps, reproducing the smell of an invaded hive. I use fungi which are in fact native. They're, they're natural enemies of certain insects. They cause diseases in insects. We don't tend to see it. It's just one of those things happening out there in the ecosystem. The ultimate thing is stop beetles getting into a hive in the first place. If you can have a trap outside the uh, a whole lot of apiary, a whole lot of beehive, go into a trap that you've got the smell in, then it's a great way of stopping them getting into hives. We're here today to get a first-hand account of how the small hive beetle has affected the honeybee, Mr. Apis Willifer. Mate, the small hive beetle's been devastating, you know, just it's hard enough to run a colony by ourselves, but to put up this little bugger, pull our time in to get rid of him, you know, I've had to move houses four times in the last year because it's just hard. We're not equipped, we haven't got the defences to keep these buggers out. The pollination services are worth millions to your agricultural industry. So, mate, it looks like without us, these will go down too. Clearly, the South African small hive beetle is no small problem to European honeybees in our ecosystem. But it's not just a bee problem, it's our problem too. Alright, thank you very much for talking to us today. No worries, mate. I've got to run, I've got some work to do. Let me press the button. I'm on a roll! <laughs> oh. You know when you're getting old! <laughs> <laughs> we have to spend all our time putting it. It's a problem. Yeah, it's a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to say.
saying it's great to see so many of you here. Much better turnout to last year. <laughs> it won't take away from what we're trying to yeah. say. Humans rely on us for our pollination, wax, and. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 ha!